All right, we're doing a little bit more with our work on rate of change and slope, and we'll look at a challenge problem and then a real-world connection problem. So challenge problem is, is shown here. Maybe pause the video and give it a try before you, before you listen on. See if you, can, see if you can get it. Which line is steeper? How do you know? Well, obviously the blue line's steeper, right? It, you can just tell it goes up steeper. But that's a, that's a common misconception. We have to actually look at the scales of our graph and I think you can see here in this space of about five, we're going up about 25-ish. Okay, we'll, we'll get more exact in a second. And here in the space of about two, we're only going up one. Okay, so in fact, the red line, believe it or not, is the steeper line. But let's go ahead and, and find, find the actual slopes. So. As we did before, try to find some nice clean points that the line goes through, create a slope triangle, use your scale that looks like it's up 20 for a run of four. So the slope is gonna be 20 over four, which is five. Okay, same deal on this blue line, find some nice clean points. All right, so here it looks like we have a rise of 0.5 and a run of one. So slope is going to be 0.5 over one, which is just 0.5, which is a half, okay? So definitely the red line is steeper, even though we've graphed it in a, in a way that makes it look like it's less steep. Okay, next one is a real world connection problem. Again, I encourage you to pause the video, give it a try on your own, and then, and then check back in and see how you did. This is, a, this is a true scenario with actual real numbers. So Interstate 70 in Colorado climbs up and over the Rocky Mountains to the west, and it goes um, through the Eisenhower Tunnel at the crest of the mountains, ultimately under the Continental Divide, the, the watershed boundary between the Mississippi River and the Colorado River to the west. And so for some of the steeper sections, the road signs say that the road's climbing at an 8% grade, which is a pretty steep road for a highway. But the overall grade is about 4.5% um, once you get past a little town called Silverthorne. And so you're looking at the map, and at the map you estimate that you'll drive uh, 9 miles from Silverthorne to the Eisenhower Tunnel. And the elevation of Silverthorne is just over 9,000 feet above sea level, and we're trying to figure out what the elevation of the tunnel will be. All right, so let's, let's go and figure this out. I'm actually going to um, draw a slope triangle first to help us here. And it's not going to be to scale because this triangle I just drew would actually have a slope of much more than 4.5% if it was to scale. But when you see a highway sign with a steepness or a grade on it, that's what that means. It means you're gaining four and a half feet for every 100 feet that you go in the horizontal direction. And before we go on though, let me make sure we're clear though that th this is your car driving up the road, right? There's a little car right there. Um, and the miles or the distance that you drive on the car is not going to be 100 feet. Okay, you're on the hypotenuse of that triangle. You could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the actual distance you drive. It's not gonna be much more than 100 feet, but it'll be a little bit more than 100 feet. And so that's why in writing this problem, I was clear to write that you got the horizontal distance from the map, okay? So that, that means it's the horizontal distance. It's not the, it's not the driving distance, okay? Um, so there's our, there's our slope triangle. And let's go ahead and draw a larger version of that for our real world scenario here. Okay, so we have something that looks like this, roughly the same steepness. It should be the same steepness. This is X. We don't know how much higher than Silverthorne we're going to be. And this is nine miles. Okay, so we're, we have a nine mile horizontal distance at a slope of four and a half percent. And I'm going to convert nine into feet, multiply by 5,280 feet in a mile. So this turns into 47,520 feet, okay? And if we can figure out what X is, we could just add that on to Silverthorne's elevation of 9,035 feet and figure out what the height of the tunnel is. So to be clear, the tunnel's up here, and that's the tunnel that goes through the, the highest of the peaks. 
um, and down to the other side towards towards the Pacific Ocean. And this is Silverthorne right here, a little old mining town. Okay, so what what this shows to me is that I can make a um, I can make a I can set up a proportion and solve this. An easy way of thinking about this is how many chunks of a hundred feet go into that. So we can really think of just dividing the forty seven thousand five hundred twenty by a hundred, and that's how many that would give us how many chunks of four point five feet we have to gain. Okay, so we could even set it up like this: forty seven five twenty over a hundred equals x over 4.5 and you could cross multiply but i think it's just more intuitive to think about how many how many chunks of 100 go into that 47520 so that's going to be 475.2 equals x over 4.5 okay and then we just multiply both sides by my 4.5 here keeping our equation balanced and we will end up with 2138.4. So that's a big that's a big hill you're climbing. You're going up over 2,000 feet in the space of just nine miles. So it's so it's certainly a significant climb that you're doing. And um, when I when I drive up this, I often see some cars on the side of the road overheating and driving down. You always worry about you know the big trucks. Are their brakes going to work? Um, as we're coming down this this steep highway so x is equal to this 2138.4 and so let's add on our elevation of silverthorn which is 9035 feet and we get a tunnel elevation of 11173.4 feet above sea level so over 11000 feet high probably right about at tree line okay Hope you can maybe make that drive sometime. It's really a beautiful drive. And that's a good place to stop right there.